This is it, our first taste of cobblestones for 2022. This Saturday, the men's and women's on loop het news plans will take place on the famous road of Flanders. Coming up, a look at the slightly revised routes for this year, the big favourites for each race, and our own predictions for the wins. Plus, a look ahead to Sunday's Kerner Brussels Kerner, which forms part of what's often termed opening weekend. All three races will be live and on demand on GCN+. Uh, on Week Newsblad is available throughout Europe plus the Asia Pacific, excluding China, New Zealand and Australia, whilst Kuna is available in all GCN Plus territory. And for Omloop, we will have our first breakaway show of the year. Adam and Danny Christmas will be joining Orla in this studio to build up to and analyse all the action starting at 12.30 GMT, which is 1.30 CET. Right, let's start by taking a look at the route of Saturday's races. Uh, both are going to start in Ghent after a team's presentation in the famous Coit Cavellodrome, home to the Ghent Six Day. The men will start their race first and they will face 204 kilometres, that includes nine flat cobbled sectors and 14 climbs along the way. The first of those cobbled roads comes after just 43 kilometres, the Hog Hook, a sector they tackle three times in total and it leads straight onto the first climb of the Lieberg. The main action starts at the halfway point of the race though. The Huyser Pontweg leads straight into the Kattenberg and from there as they wind their way eastwards the difficulties come thick and fast. You can say that again, Sorry, they Thick do, and fast. They do really come thick and fast. In fact there is a section of 11 kilometres which comes after 164 k's of racing that includes five climbs and one very lengthy cobbled sector. So if things haven't already split up at that point in the race it's almost certain that it will split up there. Let's be realistic, it will have split up. Very likely it will have done, yes. Yeah, especially given that the forecast is for a reasonable amount of wind on Saturday, albeit dry, has to be said. Uh, anyway, the last chance for the strongest to make the difference on the day will be the infamous back-to-back -back climbs of the Muir and the Bosberg. Which is, of course, the old traditional route for the Tour of Flanders, with the Muir in particular having produced the most memorable moments of that race over the years. It is a brutal climb, and under normal circumstances, there will only be a handful of riders at the front over the top. From the Bosberg, it's a fast 13k run into the finish line in Ninova, where the winner will be crowned. And the finale of the women's race is exactly the same as well. Their race distance is 129 kilometers, and it's still takes in the majority of the climbs and the cobbles. Yeah, five cobbled sectors and nine climbs in total for the women over that distance. And they've got that exact same stretch of 11 kilometers that includes that one cobbled sector and those five climbs. So the route isn't dissimilar to the last few editions for either the men or the women, but what about the riders? Well, there are provisionally six former winners of the men's race on the start line with a total of eight wins between them. Greg van Avermaet and Philippe Joubert with two wins each. Two other Belgians, Sepp van Marker and Jasper Stuyven, plus Zdenek Stibar and Michael Vulgren. However, Sai, the favourite, for me at least, at this race is Wout van Aert. <laughs> even though he hasn't even raced on the road yet this season, and even though in his three previous participations at this race, he has never finished inside the top ten. Well, an outside bet for you there, Dan. <laughs> uh, now, he doesn't normally... Fair, to be fair to you, Dan, it need that much racing to be in form. But then he has said that his aim is to peak later this season. There is that, yes. But then he doesn't need to be at his peak, does he, <laughs> to win a race like on loop Het New No, Blatt. true that, Dan, true oh, that. Don't start with all of that. OK, right. The big favourite for me is basically anyone on Quickstep Alpha Vinyl. We have seen it on so many occasions in these races that even if they don't have an outstanding favourite, they can still win. Their lineup for the race is Lampart, De Klerk, Honoré, Kaiser, Askreen, Seneschal and Stieber. It's quite the lineup, really, that, yes. isn't it? Even well, without Julian Alaphilippe and without last year's winner, Davide Ballerini. However, without wanting to push my point home about Wout van Aert too much to you, Si, I reckon he's got the strongest team around him at any cobbled classic ever. Tish Benoit, Mike Turnison and Christophe Laporte, all amongst them. Yeah, fair enough. That is pretty solid, isn't it? Uh, and talking about solid, what about Bahrain? Bahrain? Bahrain victorious as well. First outing of the year for Sonny Colbrelli, who had the season of dreams in 2021. Matej Mohoric as well has a great chance of the win, in my opinion, particularly given how strong he looked mm. in Valenciana. Hausler and Turns will offer great backup, and Bauhaus could be a threat as well if it comes down to a larger sprint like it did last year. Those three teams do look particularly strong. They do. Given the provisional start, as we've got to say. Uh, other riders 
defenders to watch out for include Tom Pickup of the Ineos Grenadiers, even though he stated that his big goals come later as well. A week later, <laughs> apparently, at Strada Bianca. Uh, John Dagen Cole, Alessandro Curvy, Matteo Trentin, Connor Swift, uh, Dries de Bont, and Victor Campenarts, you should watch out for too. Well, yeah, I'm particularly interested to see how Victor Campenarts gets on. He hasn't raced this season, but he has been training really hard mm. and had some great performances in the Classics last year. He did, he? yeah, he's with Lotto Sudau now. Like you said, yet to race for them since that transfer. And actually, that's reminded me, a rider we haven't mentioned so far is Tim Wellens. He's been pretty consistent so far this season, hasn't he? In fact, I don't think he's finished outside the top 12 at any races so far in 2022. Uh, another rider we've missed so far is Peter Sagan, now of Total Energies. However, if the Tour is out Maritime divide anything to go by, he will not be winning in my view, on Saturday. Nope. He was way off the pace, even by my own standards, let alone his, <laughs> on stage one. That does sound like cause for concern, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Ring yeah. the alarm bells. Uh, right then, on to the women's race. For me, there are three big favourites. So former winner Annemiek van Vluten, Elisa Balsamo and Marta Bastianelli. All of whom won last week in Spain, didn't they, in they their did. first race of the year. So yeah, three different riders, two fast finishes, and then van Vluten, who you'd imagine will be hoping to be either solo or in a small group by the finish line. Balsamo leads a strong Trek Segafredo team that also includes Ellen van Dijk, who also won in Valenciana, plus Audrey Cordon Rago and Shirin van Anroy, the Dutch youngster who has been lighting up the cyclocross scene this winter. She has. I'll be interested to see how she gets on a big road race, actually, Shirin van Anroy. Uh, van Vleuten's Moby Star team doesn't look as strong, uh, particularly in the absence of Emma Norskar, one of the revelations of last season. Uh, SD Works, meanwhile, as ever, do have a very strong team, and I reckon this is the year of Lotta Kopecki. She is going to win big at some point. Uh, she's joined by Lonika Unikun and Marlon Rusa, amongst others, in SD Works. Grace Brown also has to start as one of the big favourites. She settled nicely into her new team, FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine, and has already shown decent form this season. She joins forces with Marta Cavalli and Brody Chapman, so watch out for their distinctive, very stylish blue, white and red kit. It is stylish, isn't it? Uh, as is the Canyon SRAM kit, and they are going to be led by Kasia Nubiodoma. Uh, they also feel the only other former winner, apart from Van Vleuten this year, Tiffany Cromwell. Meanwhile, whilst Jumbo Visma are without Mariana Voss at Omloop Het Nieuwsblad, do not discount Yip van den Bos because she's twice finished in the top 10 at that particular race. No Voss, but a different boss. Yes, exactly. See nice what I did one, there. Si. Thanks yeah. very much. Uh, right, predictions. You go first, Dan. Uh, I am going to go for Florian Seneschal and Lotte Kopecky. Really? You've already said Wat Van Aert. You've got another one now. I've changed my mind over the <laughs> last sort of five or six minutes and gone with somewhere else. Okay, uh, I am going to go with Tom Pidcock. Peaking too early then, presumably. Uh, I figured if you're going to be pinging next Saturday, you probably best be going pretty well <laughs> the Saturday before. Uh, and uh, I think Elisa Balsamo. Well, yeah, she is a very good bet, isn't she? She hasn't got much of a history in Omloop Het Newsblad in terms of big results, but given her results at the end of last season and the start of this one, yep. not a bad pick, I will give you that. So that is everything you need to know about Omloop Het Newsblad. But on the Sunday, it is the second part of the opening weekend, Kerner Brussels Kerner. A race that starts and finishes in Kerner, as the name suggests, but doesn't quite get to Brussels <laughs> these days. And now this one, unfortunately, does not have a women's version currently, but the men's race will start on GCN Plus in all territories from 1330 GMT, which is 1430 CET. It's got a new revised course this year, which unfortunately removes the Aude Quermont. So we're gonna to have to wait a few more weeks to see that for the first time this year. Instead, there's an extended section in the Wallonie region before they head back into Flanders via the Kreuzberg and then the Côte de Trio, which is your favorite climb, isn't it? Top Don't of bring it. that up again. It's just the top of it. I've actually like. put that, be that to bed in a forthcoming documentary for GCM Plus Sci. Thank you very much. Anyway, after that, they're onto the Kleesberg, which is the 13th and final climb of the day. And then there's a long run back into Kurna for the traditional lap and then the finish line. So 17 world teams and eight pro teams are going to be taking part, with many of the big names from Omloop taking a second bite at the cherry, plus 
normally a few extra sprinters added into the mix. Do not miss it, and don't forget that beyond the opening weekend cold races, we've also got the Vuelta a Galicia, the UAE Tour, and the eSports World Championships for you on GCN Plus this week. Uh, territory restrictions do apply to some of those, but make sure you join us for them if you can. Absolutely. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.